that the U.S. has been tied up in the Middle East for decades. And Professor Michael Genovese from Loyola Marymount University is back with us this morning. And Professor, can you tell us why the region seems to be in constant turmoil? Uh, where to begin? 3,000 <laughs> years ago, 300. Uh, for the most part, the modern Middle East and its problems stem from the end of World War I, collapse of the Ottoman Empire, when the French and the British literally recarved the map of the region. And the lines that they drew weren't always natural, nor did they always make sense. And in effect, you build into the region a series of conflicts into a powder keg that's just waiting for a spark to ignite it. Mm -hmm. and, and when did the U.S. involvement really pick up? It was primarily after World War II when the old imperial powers of Europe lost their status mm -hmm. and the United States became the dominant power. And so we began to see that we had interests in the region and we had responsibilities. Mm -hmm. and, and how did the U.S. presidents really try to handle the ongoing problems of the region? Well. At first, President Truman saw it as merely a series of pawns mm -hmm. in the bigger chess game between the Soviet Union and the United States in the Cold War. When Eisenhower came in, he tried to have a more pragmatic, kind of honest broker relationship mm -hmm. where the United States was going to basically be that source that brings everyone together. Uh, President Kennedy tried the same thing. It wasn't until Lyndon Johnson that we see the big shift mm -hmm. because under Johnson, the United States very, very vocally tilts towards Israel, which makes sense. It's our, they're our mm -hmm. friends, they're a democracy. The problem was that it made the honest broker role more difficult because a lot of the Arab states were suspicious of us. Mm -hmm. And so it complicated things for American leadership. Uh, after Johnson, it was Richard Nixon, and you begin to see things really start to get murky. Mm -hmm. um, it was the beginning of the use of terrorism as a tactic. Mm -hmm. It was the rise of OPEC and the use of oil for, in political ways. You will not remember this because you're far too young, but I remember standing in, sitting in my car in gas lines, waiting, hoping that I would get a tank, tank full of gas. Mm -hmm. And so we begin to see the politics of the region really get murky mm -hmm. at this point. Mm -hmm. and, and from that point, the story really does take a dark turn. U.S. involvement in the region really comes back to haunt a series of presidents. Uh, well several presidents get crushed by the region from mm -hmm. this point on. And the first one was Jimmy Carter. Mm -hmm. Carter tried to be the honest broker. The problem was, uh, and, and in fact, he was very successful. The, the Camp David Accords between Egypt and Israel, tremendous success. Mm -hmm. The problem is that the region begins to deteriorate. Mm -hmm. uh, we see the Iranian Revolution and the hostage crisis, which just tore the Carter presidency apart. Mm -hmm. Then Reagan comes in and they, they get even more murky. You had a war between Iran and Iraq. Mm -hmm. We support Iraq. We mm -hmm. give arms to Saddam Hussein, mm -hmm. the arms that were used to kill Americans later. Mm -hmm. Afghanistan, the Soviet Union had invaded during Carter's time. Carter gave arms. Reagan accelerated that pace and even called the rebels in Afghanistan the equivalent of our founding fathers they become the Taliban, using mm -hmm. weapons we gave them to kill Americans. And then, of course, with Reagan, you had the great uh, crisis of the Iran-Contra scandal. The only period of, of relative success was the George H.W. Bush presidency, mm -hmm. where he had the great success in the Gulf War, a masterful stroke of management, politics, and policy uh, that some said, said he left unfinished by leaving Saddam Hussein in power. But he was the last president to really survive uh, right. the re politics of the region. Yeah, but what about the presidency of George W. Bush? Well, we, that's the great unraveling. Mm -hmm. uh, we see 9-11. Mm -hmm. We see the rise of the anti-terrorist state. We see the emergence of the axis of evil as our target. And the war of choice in Iraq is the beginning of the unraveling of the whole region. And it's the mess we have today, the one that we're trying to face today. The irony today is that President Obama, elected in part on the promise to end the war in, Af in Iraq, does so and then is drawn back in. Mm -hmm. So certainly still a lot of turmoil and uh, there's a lot to be said of what will come next. Well, what will come next? I think you can expect more trouble. You can mm -hmm. expect more hostility in the region. You can, the, the fear for the United States is that there will be a caliphate set up where a religious leader takes over this region, that region, this country, that region, and imposes harsh Islamic law mm -hmm. and also becomes a welcoming mat for terrorists, for terrorist training, a har safe harbor for terrorists. So we still have very, very serious interests in the region. Okay, we can't we can't give up completely, can we? That's right. All right, thank you so much, Michael Genovese, for that history lesson thank this you. morning.